Hey, you remember last week I extracted a little bit of honey? In today's video, I wanna talk about the moisture content of honey and where it should be. How do you check the moisture content? I'm gonna share all that with you. So let's dive right in. You ever heard of a refractometer? That's the tool you need to check the moisture content of your honey. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how simple it is to use a refractometer. Um, these refractometers can be picked up on Amazon for right around 30 bucks. And I'll leave a link down in the video description. And if I remember, I'll even pin it to the top comment so it's easy to find that link. Real handy tool to have for any beekeeper. Um, moisture content. Um, it's a pretty well known fact to us beekeepers that when we pull honey, we want to pull honey that is capped. Those are frames that have cells that have lids on them. They're completely closed off. The bees have pretty much made sure the moisture content's right where it needs to be, and then they put a lid on it. If you think about it, it's kind of like, you know how we can and, and store stuff to eat at a later time? It's the same process to a bee. They're working to get the moisture content right where it needs to be, and then they put the lid on it. It's like canning for bees, but in a large, large quantities. Thousands at a time. <laughs> so. If we think about this uh, capped honey, um, not all the times when we're pulling frames to extract are all of the cells on the frame capped. So when all of that honey mixes together in a bucket, um, any cells that had nectar in it that were open, you can almost guarantee the moisture content's too high. And when that all mixes into one big batch in a bucket, all of the honey now contains a higher moisture content. And if you do not lower that moisture content before you put it into a bottle, there's a very, very good chance it's going to ferment if that honey isn't ate in a quick period of time. So it's up to us, the beekeepers, to make sure we do our best job of making sure this honey is going to last for our customers and for ourselves. Um, you know, the bees do got a ton of work into it, so for us to screw it up would be a big no-no. So. Here's a little clip I shot last week after I extracted my honey of me using my refractor meter and you'll see how it's used and it's very, very simple. Before you bottle your honey, it's very important that you make sure that the moisture content in the honey is low. And ideally, you would wanna see it around 17%. 18, in my opinion, is slightly high. Um, so we're gonna check it with my portable refractometer which looks a little something like this here and the way it works is is you first you calibrate it with olive oil after it's been calibrated you then put a drop of honey on that blue screen and you put this flap down and smash it against the honey and you want to make sure that it covers this whole surface area and then you can look through the refractometer and you can get a reading on it so Obviously, there's no honey on there yet, so we're not going to get a reading. So let me put a little bit of honey on here. We're going to get one little drop of honey. Put it right down the lens like so. We're going to close it up. And you'll be able to see that there's no air bubbles in that. And now we'll look through it again and see what we get as far as our reading. So from what I'm seeing, it's about... 18 and a half, almost 19 percent. So what I want to do is let this moisture um, get out of this honey. And a way to do that is just take the bucket off, take it in the house while the air conditioner's running, or if you've got a dehumidifier, um, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to wick, it's going to suck the moisture out of here and lower the moisture content. So probably within a day or so of leaving the lid off of this. And probably what I'll do is put my uh, my bucket strainer over the top just so nothing can get into it. And uh, we'll let the moisture content lower before I put it in a bottle. Now there's many different styles of refractometers on the market. So you wanna make sure when you're getting one that it does do moisture content. And the one I have linked does do that. So if that's of help, make sure you follow that link over and get your um, refractometer before you bottle your honey, folks. Very, very handy tool for us to have in our beekeeping toolbox. 
this week um, I guess got my book back from uh, my book people and here's how it's going to work I've got um, to go through the book one more time make sure I'm happy with the wording on every single thing um, once I read through the book and give it the okay everybody that signed up to follow the progress of the book um, is going to get a small sample to read through and I'm very very excited to finally be able to share that with y'all it's, it's been a long road um, who knew there was so much into putting a book together I did not realize the work that goes into it I am very very appreciative for the people that I have working with me my team um, putting this book together because wow what um, what a project so if you're one of the people that signed up to get updates on my book be looking for that here in the next few weeks um, it's going to take me a little bit of time to read through the book. I'm not a big reader to start with, and now I have a whole book to read on top of my daily farm life. So, yeah, I've already read it once, so to go through it again is kind of, you know, I know I realize it's very, very, very important. I don't want the wording to be off from the way I would say it, so it's, I'm very, very picky about it. I know um, I'm probably driving the book people nuts, with the different changes I keep making, but I want it to be perfect. I want everybody to be happy with it, and I want the words to be my words. So, um, yeah, got that to do. Um, I'm on page 25 of, I think, 200, so got a little bit to go. <laughs> anyway, I'm pretty excited to share that news with you. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. And if you're looking for a refractometer, don't forget, it's linked in the video description. And if Jason remembers, he will pin it to the top comment and make it easier for everybody to follow or to find. Um, if you enjoyed the video, smash the thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed, please take a moment to do so. And if you would like to get on that email list so you can get a sample of the book, I'll link that down in the video description too. Um, thanks for your time and I uh, hope I taught you something today. Have a good week, folks, and we'll see you back here next Sunday.